Today we're going to be building some cheap and easy modular hills that you can use with your war games or your D&D campaign. How are you today? Art Jeremiah here and I'm back with another terrain building video. This week we're doing terrain because it's been a while. We're going to do something easy too, something fun and easy. So all you'll need for this build is some foam. Doesn't really matter what foam, preferably XPS foam, but other foam works too. So first thing I do, you don't have to draw out the shape of the hill. I did that because I have templates that I use for these hills and this set was for someone and they wanted those shapes. Best tool ever, an 88 cent knife from Walmart. It's slightly serrated. You don't have to use a Walmart knife. I don't know if they still have those. I'm sure that they still have them for around a dollar somewhere. Dollar store, Walmart, anywhere. Just these cheap knives. They're perfect for just ripping foam. And first thing I do is just roughly cut. I'm not like cutting all the way through the foam, okay? I'm just cutting out where the shapes are. And then I'm just going to break it. This is the destructive part, the fun part. We want those breaks. We don't We don't necessarily want them be, to be clean breaks. We don't want them to be clean cuts. We want them to be breaks. Those breaks will make it look more like natural rock faces. And yeah, I just go around and I do that. I break as much as I can until I can't break anymore. Eventually, it gets too thin to break. So I ended up just having to, to go to town on the tearing. And I'm using a knife, but I'm not cutting with the knife, if you get what I mean. I'm tearing the edges of the foam. And that's going to give it a nice natural look. And I've done this in previous builds, like with the, with the acid pools and the lava pools. I use this same knife, and it gives a nice rough texture that mimics rock perfectly. And I just do it randomly. You can see how I'm holding it. I know a lot of people say don't cut towards yourself. Don't cut towards yourself. I'm not cutting, I'm ripping. And this is pretty dull knife, even though it's serrated. It can cut, but it does good. Anyway, we make a mess. Just ripping this foam, cutting this foam. Takes a minute, let's speed through this. Okay, here's a good trick. Staticky foam, okay? I know people like to joke about it, but it frustrates me. I hate staticky foam, it gets all over the place. So I keep this little spray bottle and I spray and it gets rid of the static. It doesn't really get all over, it's just water. You could use something like a little bit of fabric softener in there too and really do a good job. And it smells great. Now I'm going to rip out some places where we're going to put rocks later. These are just little holes. This step I want to say isn't really required. You could just, I mean I'm using, I'm going to be using actual little pebbles for stones. You could just use you could use wood chips for stone. A lot of people do that and it looks really natural. Or you can just use the pieces of extra styrofoam you had sitting around and add little stones to it. Or you could just not add stones. More lately, I'm adding this sort of stone to the side so that these are more stackable. These are still stackable, but you'll notice that I'm placing these marks towards the outsides. That way they can stack on top of each other and be more modular. These are really good hills for wargaming. And you can do them bigger too. I don't do them too big. It ends up being a lot of shipping and people don't like paying for that much shipping. So I just try to keep them small. Smaller. Still big enough. Once it gets over like 16 inches, it's too big. But for you like at home, if you're just making this at home and keeping it at home, definitely do them as big as you want, as wide as you want. And you'll see these look pretty, pretty cool already. It's a little bit time consuming to sit there and rip them all. So I'm not saying it's like fast, but it's definitely... It's definitely something that's easy to do. And I just pick out a few stones that I want to use for on each piece. And in the meantime, I'm letting my hot glue gun warm up. You'll see I just kind of fill each one of these little craters that I made. And then while the glue's still hot, dump it in. And I'm actually, a lot of times when I do this, I use the hot setting so it melts it just a little bit. I don't think I did this time, but a lot of times I do. You gotta be careful though, it might get on your finger and burn your finger. That hot setting on this Gorilla Glue gun is like freaking hot. You don't have to worry too much about the glue stringing. I know that that's really common with glue guns, but don't worry about it too much on this build. We're gonna be leaving these rock faces up on top, but a lot of it's gonna be covered by sand. So don't worry too much about that. And then after we get that all, all those put in, we're gonna add some sand. and. This is a mixture of Mod Podge and black paint. I like using that because I can see where I painted. A lot of times if you just use white glue, you can't really see where you've already painted and I end up with like little bald spots. I'm usually doing this in quite a bit of a hurry. And I tried, I used to just paint it on and then I ended up noticing that some of the, my terrain was getting like 
streak marks of sand and it looked kind of like unnatural. And I've seen out other people's terrain too. You can see like the brush strokes and then the sand. So try to like dab it on. It'll, it'll look a lot better. It'll still have like an uneven look and the sand will look better. Not like it's been painted on. Then I just dumped the sand on. I didn't wait for, for these to dry dry. As soon as they were dry to the touch and I was confident the sand wasn't gonna like go off completely, I started painting them black with the Mod Podge and black paint mix. And I'm actually being a little bit careful where the sand is and I'm just like dabbing the paint in. That way it doesn't go all over. It's okay if some of the sand ends up on other parts of the foam. It's just gonna make it more natural with this build. These are already looking great, I think. We'll just speed through this. It's just painting stuff black. Okay, so when you're tearing it with a knife, there's gonna be all these little fuzzies and stuff. But when you paint it with this glue black paint mixture, it's gonna like conform to the whole piece and it's gonna look like natural rock and it's gonna look like rubble and it's gonna look really good. So keep all that kind of stuff. Even some of the like knife marks end up just looking like stone. It, it's weird. I don't know how to explain it, but it looks good. Okay, now we're just gonna be painting, again, I've said this word before, overbrush. It's not dry brushing. Um, we're just not worried about getting over the whole piece. We're just, we're just gonna paint on that paint and I'm wiping off just a little tad, just so it's not like gonna go in the crevices, but we're just gonna paint that paint on and leave all the black that's showing. Like all, like don't worry about the recesses where the black is. It's gonna get an extra detail and shading, so you'll want that later on. And I'm not very careful with this at all. I, all I'm going for here is paint it until the brush strokes are gone, if that makes sense. I don't want a bunch of brush strokes in it, even though that could be a cool artistic thing to do. And now I like to add these streaks of, I forgot what the color, I think it's Moccasin Brown by Anita's, but it's basically a, a, a raw sienna. And I just add these long streaks in the same process as we did before over brushing. The brush really grips to the terrain and it pulls the paint off fairly quick. So you can do that and you just kind of like, after you put on the paint, you just kind of scrub it and it gives this softened effect. And this color is perfect for like a rust formation. You know, like a lot of rock, it kind of like looks gray, but then it has like speckles of rust or like streaks of rust. I think a lot of people don't know it's rust. They just see orange rock, but, but that's rust. That means it's high ore content. So a lot of the times, I don't know if that's every time, but from my knowledge of things, and I'm not a geologist and I'm not an expert miner or anything like that, but from what the research I've personally done, that means that there's ore, an ore that rusts, so like iron ore. And now we're gonna really make it stand out by doing a light and a dry brush to the whole thing with Antique White by Apple Barrel. And the Apple Barrel is the Walmart paint. You can use whatever you want. Just go with an off-white and it'll look more realistic, like a warmish off-white in general. I don't always use a warmish off-white. A lot of my builds use this warmish Antique White though. And you'll see as soon as you get those dry brushings on, and I'm using this big brush. I don't like the makeup brush thing. Speaking of, <laughs> I don't know why everybody likes that so much. I feel like I'm wasting so much paint. I feel like I can't get it all out of the brush to the point that I want it to be out of the brush. I know everybody's using those cheap dollar store makeup brushes. I don't like those. I like these big flat brushes like this. I got this one at Hobby Lobby. Unfortunately, the Michaels in my area closed. They have better stuff there, better artist brushes there, better artist acrylics. Hobby Lobby's cheap, which is good for crafting, and they have a lot of stuff. I don't necessarily agree with all their values, but I do agree with their prices. So this brush is a cheaper brush from Hobby Lobby. It's not cheap cheap, but it's one of the lower priced hobby and you'll see look at this that looks really good after we dry brush it and i'm just gonna leave it like that you can add like streaks of brown with the rust and all that stuff but for this build right now this is what we got and i'm gonna turn them over and we're gonna paint the bottoms with a black and this black that i'm squirting out of this bottle is actually mod podge mixed with black paint and it's just gonna strengthen the bottom and keep it from being staticky on bottom you'll want to make sure you do that with your builds i would say that's personal preference but i do think it's better and i just put this on with a paint roller. You can go fairly quick with a paint roller doing this. I'm just using this cheap paint roller I got. This is a Walmart paint roller. You can use whatever paint roller you want. It really is an effective way to have like a nice even surface. It looks really nice on the bottom of your terrain. And I know not everybody's looking at the bottom of the terrain, but it definitely gives it like a more professional feel if that makes sense. 
I always forget to say to like this video. Please like the video. That not only shows me that you like the video, but that shows YouTube that it's worth watching and it gets out to more crafters like you and me. Also, check out my Patreon. My Patreon is growing. I'm thinking about adding some more perks. I have ideas. Anyway, I guess that's it for today.